If your eyes don't always work together, cataract surgery can bring some unique challenges you may not have thought about. If you have strabismus or a misalignment of the eyes, today's video is going to talk about what you need to know before heading into the operating room for cataract surgery. We'll talk about what strabismus or a misalignment of the eyes is, how common it is, what visual symptoms it usually comes with, and then we'll talk about how strabismus affects cataract surgery, including how it might affect the lens that you should choose during cataract surgery. Real quick, before we jump into it, my name is Brad Sifrig. I'm a board certified cataract surgeon. This is Cataract Companion, the patient guide to cataract surgery success. If you are a loved one or getting ready to have cataract surgery, you're in the right place. This channel is dedicated to helping patients better understand the cataract surgery process to get their best results. Now, Cataract Companion takes no money from any lens companies. It's not affiliated with any specific clinics. You can trust there's no upsells, no hidden agenda, no ulterior motives just the unbiased, up-to-date information you need to get your best results. Now, as mentioned earlier, strabismus is any misalignment of the eyes. There's different types of strabismus, the most common ones being esotropia, where the eyes are crossed inwards, exotropia, where one or both eyes are deviated outwards, or hyper or hypotropia, where one eye is deviated higher and one eye is deviated lower than the other eye. Strabismus can commonly be referred to as having a lazy eye, being cross-eyed, or having a wandering eye. Now, children who have strabismus may also develop something called amblyopia, where the vision in that deviated eye becomes weaker because the child prefers the eye that's aligned well. In contrast, when adults develop strabismus, because both eyes are already fully developed with their vision, they commonly have something called binocular diplopia, better known as double vision. Now this specific type of double vision is only present when both eyes are open and it actually goes away if they close or cover up one eye. Looking at the underlying etiology of strabismus, it can be fairly complex. Eye movements and eye alignment is controlled by the extraocular muscles, which are muscles that attach to the outside of the eye. Those muscles themselves are controlled by cranial nerves, and these cranial nerves are obviously an extension from the brain. For the eyes to stay aligned, the extraocular muscles and their cranial nerves must move the eyes accurately, and the brain's fusion system that keeps the eyes paired well together must keep those two images combined. The sensory input from each eye has to be clear and balanced. Whenever there is a problem along any part of that pathway, it can lead to strabismus where the eyes are misaligned, and strabismus is actually fairly common. Most studies indicate that somewhere around 4% of the population has strabismus. Now, what do those 4% of people experience when they have strabismus? Well, again, it depends a lot on their age. If they're a young child, age 10 or less, the most common thing that develops with strabismus when the eyes aren't aligned is something called amblyopia. Basically, because the child is so young and their brain is so plastic and developing, rather than have double vision, their brain actually learns to just prefer one eye and to kind of tune out the picture from the other eye so that they won't have double vision. Now, after about age 10, if you develop a new misalignment of the eyes at that point, the brain is really already locked into its visual input from both eyes. And that's why adults or even older children who develop strabismus will have double vision rather than amblyopia. Now, as far as treatment options for strabismus go, again, this depends a lot on what age you are when you develop strabismus. For young children who develop strabismus, really it's an urgent condition that needs to be treated. Because amblyopia can only be treated before about age 10 or so, the child oftentimes will have surgery or glasses to help align their eyes. Oftentimes they'll also have to patch their stronger eye to encourage the brain to develop vision in the weaker eye. And for adults who develop strabismus, really the main symptom they're gonna be dealing with is double vision or diplopia. There's a few treatment options for that. One, we can put prisms in glasses. Now prisms basically bend the light that's coming into the eye and kind of trick the eyes back into alignment. So that's one option. A more permanent solution is strabismus surgery, where an ophthalmologist and a strabismus surgeon will go in and actually adjust the position of the muscles on the outside of the eye. By adjusting those muscles and their positions, they can help to line the eyes back up. Since you've made it this far in the video, let me know in the comments below if you've dealt with strabismus or double vision around the time of cataract surgery. Other patients would definitely be interested to know what your experience was like and if it got better after having surgery. On that note, let's talk a little bit more about cataract surgery for patients who are dealing with strabismus. Now, strabismus itself or misalignment of the eyes does not affect the success rate of cataract surgery. Of course, cataract surgery won't resolve the symptoms that are being caused by the strabismus specifically. 
So it won't resolve amblyopia or having a weaker eye if it's been present since childhood. And it typically won't resolve any double vision that's binocular diplopia or double vision that's due to that misalignment of the eyes. Now, a couple things to consider if you have strabismus and you're getting ready for cataract surgery. One, it's typically a good idea to actually have the surgeon operate on your more dominant or your eye that tends to fixate more first to avoid something called fixation switch diplopia. Now, in strabismus that's been present since childhood or has been present long term, the brain will typically have one eye that it likes to focus with, one eye that it fixates with, and the other eye it will tune out to try to prevent as much double vision as possible. This is especially true if you've had that strabismus since a pretty young age. Fixation switch diplopia can occur if they operate on that weaker eye first and all of a sudden it's now the better seeing eye. Because the brain will align that eye, it can actually bring out more double vision than what was present before surgery. The good news is that even if this occurs, typically improving the vision in the historically better eye or the historically fixating eye can resolve the double vision. Another consideration for cataract surgery is to avoid any blocks around the eye. So during cataract surgery, we have different options for how we numb the eye. Most commonly, we just use eye drops and a little medication actually inside the eye to numb the eye, and that's called topical anesthesia. But there are some options. It's a little more old school where we actually inject medicine around the eye. This isn't done as much anymore, more so just for patients who may have a more complicated or longer surgery or patients who deal with a lot of anxiety or movement during surgery. Because those injections around the eye are in the vicinity of those extraocular muscles, if someone already is predisposed to strabismus, it could definitely bring out increased double vision after the surgery. Now, if you have strabismus and you're thinking you may want surgery to try to improve that, rarely cataract surgery can be done at the same time as strabismus surgery. In fact, this study here showed in a small group of patients the outcomes were similar when you had strabismus surgery at the same time as cataract surgery. That being said, really I don't recommend that. The main reason being your average cataract surgeon really doesn't do very much strabismus surgery and your average strabismus surgeon doesn't do much cataract surgery. So typically what's recommended and what I would recommend is that you have cataract surgery first, you give it a few months to heal. The improved vision in the eyes can help to get better measurements for the strabismus surgery. So do cataract surgery first. If you're still wanting or needing strabismus surgery, it's something you can do a few months down the road. Finally, one last thing to talk about is what lens option should you be choosing for cataract surgery if you're dealing with strabismus or if you're dealing with double vision due to eye alignment. In case you're not aware, there's a lot of different options for lenses during cataract surgery. The lens we place in your eye during surgery really determines what your vision is going to be like for the rest of your life. If you want to learn a little bit more about those lens options, I've actually made a video that you can check out by clicking that link above. And I've also made a digital lens guide that you can download for free by scrolling down to the video description or the comments. You'll see the link to have it sent to your email there. Getting back on track here, for patients with strabismus, really I like to keep it simple and keep the eyes working well together as much as possible. So for me, this typically means using a single range monofocal lens aiming to get the distance vision into focus in both eyes. Now, if you need prism in your glasses prior to cataract surgery, really you should assume that you're still going to need glasses with prism after surgery to reduce or eliminate your double vision. That means you really need to consider whether it's worthwhile to upgrade or have an out-of-pocket cost to reduce your dependence on glasses because while it may reduce your dependence on glasses for clarity, you might still need the glasses to treat the double vision. That being said, I still think it's worthwhile to correct astigmatism at the time of surgery, either with something like manual LRIs, using a laser, or using a toric lens. If you don't correct the astigmatism, it's just one more thing that needs to be in the glasses, and a glasses prescription that has astigmatism correction and prism correction is getting a little more complicated and difficult to tune in. If you're very motivated to have a monovision set up or to try and eat off or multifocal lens, it's something you can cautiously consider, but really there's a lot of variables that are going to go into whether that's successful for you. So it's something you need to discuss individually with your surgeon on a case by case basis. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful on your journey to better vision. If you are a loved one or getting ready for cataract surgery, make sure to subscribe to Cataract Companion for more helpful videos in the future on how different eye conditions can affect the surgery. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.